When writing fiction, point of view is everything. It determines how the reader is going to experience the story, as well as which characters they get the most invested in and which characters they connect the most with. As a structural book editor, I am constantly evaluating and analyzing point of view in every story that I work with, in some cases even revising and changing that point of view, so it's something that writers should be really, really aware and conscious of from the very beginning of their story. You really want to keep point of view top of mind, whether you are in the midst of writing the story or you are somewhere along the revision process. Today I'm going to talk about the close third person perspective and give you some strategies to ensure that you are utilizing this perspective correctly and in the most optimal way. Now, close third person perspective is different from omniscient third person perspective in that it is following the point of view of one specific character at a time. That means maybe your entire novel is written in close third person perspective following the protagonist, or maybe you have a novel where you are following different characters in close third person perspective delineated by section or chapter breaks. I really enjoy this point of view and have been reading a lot of novels written in it because it allows us to get that intimate insight into each character's perspective without necessarily necessitating that you adopt their actual voice in the way that first person requires. So today I want to help you write in close third person better, and I'm going to help you do that by revealing the top five most common mistakes that I see writers make when they are writing in close third person, and I'm also going to walk through some live examples to show you what I mean and how to fix each of those mistakes. If you are interested in fiction writing, if you're working on a book manuscript, or you're interested in the publishing industry, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week I have a video with writing advice like this one or tips on publishing your book, so I would love to have you around. With that, let's talk about the first and honestly the biggest mistake when it comes to writing in close third person, and that is showing other characters' internal thoughts. When you are choosing to write in close third person, you are committing to telling the story through the lens of that character's mind and only that character's mind. That goes for whether you're following their perspective for a single chapter or for the entirety of the novel. That means you cannot have any lines within that character's point of view that shows what another character is thinking or seeing or feeling. Everything really has to be contained to that point of view character. Now I know this sounds simple and you're probably wondering why I even brought it up, but this is a mistake I actually see in virtually every novel that I edit that is written in close third person perspective, so it really can sneak up on you and as the writer, you might not even realize that you are showing something that your point of view character actually wouldn't know. So how to fix this mistake is Pretty straightforward, you are either going to remove that phrase or that line that departs from your point of view character's perspective, or you are going to revise and tweak the sentiment so that we do get that information, but from the point of view character's perspective. So let me read you an example. Megan watched the fireworks go off above the Ferris wheel. She remembered the time her first boyfriend took her to the fair and kissed her at the top of the ride. She shook off the memory when Casey nudged her. Casey could tell something was bothering Megan. The two walked toward the parking lot. Can you see the moment where we depart from Megan's point of view in that excerpt? It may not be obvious on first glance because it sounds good and I can picture the scene, I understand what's going on with Megan and Casey. However, that first line of the second paragraph is actually something that Megan would not have access to and Megan doesn't know. Megan can't tell that Casey knows something is bothering her, right? Because in that moment, we're actually getting into Casey's mindset. So we're going to revise this paragraph, revise that line specifically, and make sure that we are sticking only with Megan. Let me show you. Megan hoped Casey couldn't tell something was bothering her. The two walked toward the parking lot. This sentiment is admittedly a little bit different, but it allows us to experience the scene from only Megan's perspective. So now, instead of us knowing that Casey can tell something is bothering Megan, we are seeing Megan hope that Casey doesn't know something is bothering her. 
I recommend going back through your manuscript and seeing if you can identify any places where maybe you are unintentionally departing from your point of view character and making sure that you revise accordingly. The next mistake that I see in close third person stories is when you are naming characters that the point of view character actually doesn't know yet. So even though you are writing as a third person narrator and even though the reader might actually already know that other character's name, if the point of view character that you are writing in doesn't know that person's name, you should not include their name in that part of the story. This ensures that we are truly seeing and experiencing the scene from the point of view character's perspective and their perspective only. If you end up naming everyone, even characters that the point of view character doesn't know yet within a scene, it's just really going to muddle the relationships and confuse the reader as to who knows who and if this person has already been introduced to the point of view character or not. We really won't be able to tell who's a stranger and who knows each other. What you are going to do in this situation is describe the character that you are trying to talk about descriptively or through some type of visual explanation of who they are until the point of view character knows that person's name, in which case you can then of course switch to using their name. Let me show you what this looks like in an example. In the parking lot, Megan noticed a stranger lingering next to her car. Her heartbeat quickened and she gripped her key in her pocket. Tim tried to open the passenger door. So your question here is probably who is Tim, right? Because this is clearly a stranger trying to open the car door, so Megan would not know that that person's name is Tim. Therefore, you as the narrator should not call him Tim. You should describe him so that we know as the reader that Megan does not know this person. Here is what the revision would look like. In the parking lot, Megan noticed a stranger lingering next to her car. Her heartbeat quickened and she gripped her key in her pocket the man tried to open the passenger door. Pretty simple fix here, and it's really going to streamline the scene and ensure that the reader doesn't get confused as to why you are naming a character that the point of view character does not know. The next mistake is writing the point of view character's internal thoughts in third person. So yes, your point of view that you have selected is close third person narration, which means the vast majority of the text is going to be written in third person. However, the one exception is whenever you are writing a line of dialogue that is coming from the point of view character's perspective. Yes, while the vast majority of the novel is going to be written in third person, after all, your chosen point of view is close third person point of view, there are exceptions where you are going to use first person when it comes to dialogue or internal thoughts. So when you are trying to convey an internal thought that the point of view character is having, you are going to put that in italics and it is going to be written in first person because it should sound like how that character is speaking to themselves in their head, which is in first person and not in third person. Also make sure that you are italicizing these lines and not putting them in quotation marks because that just gets confusing as to what is being said inside their head and what is being said aloud. Let me show you an example. Megan held Casey's shoulder and stopped walking. What is that man doing? Is he trying to threaten them? So the sentiment of these lines is clear. Megan is wondering what the man is doing and if he is threatening her and Casey. However, that second question that she asks herself needs to be tweaked to be in first person because again, Megan is talking to herself in this moment. Luckily, this only requires a quick fix. So let me show you. Megan held Casey's shoulder and stopped walking. What is that man doing? Is he trying to threaten us? So we are changing them to us to ensure that those italicized internal thoughts are in first person instead of third person. The next mistake that I see in close third person stories is forgetting the point of view character's reactions to events and things that are happening around them. Again, when we are in close third person narration, we are really trying to experience the story the way that that character is experiencing it. And that includes feeling the things that they are feeling, seeing the things that they are seeing. That includes any responses or reactions that the point of view character is having to the events of the story and what is happening around them. If something significant happens in the story or someone says something shocking and we don't see the point of view character's reaction to it, it is going to feel like something is missing because we're going to wonder how they react to that. The way to fix this is to really place yourself in the character's shoes and anything that they would have a reaction to, you want to make sure that you are writing it into the scene. That is also going to amplify the emotional stakes of each scene because we are really feeling 
every response, every reaction as the point of view character is feeling it. Let me show you an example. Using some kind of tool, the man wedged open the passenger door and began to rummage around Megan's car. Casey took out her phone and dialed 911. This example really goes from event to event, so we see that the man is starting to rummage around in the car and then Casey dials 911. There's nothing grammatically incorrect with this paragraph, there's nothing incorrect from a story perspective, however, it is missing that response and reaction from Megan because when she sees someone attempting to steal something from her car, we would expect her to feel something about that. So in that case, you want to make sure that you are adding in that reaction. Let me show you what it could look like. Using some kind of tool, the man wedged open the passenger door and began to rummage around Megan's car. Megan tried to stifle tears, realizing he would probably find and take the anniversary gift Casey had given her at dinner. Casey took out her phone and dialed 911. So do you see here how this really amplifies the emotional stakes of the scene? Because now we are learning that there is something valuable in that car that Megan is concerned about, and we see that Megan is stifling tears. That really just amplifies the drama of the scene, makes it feel much more authentic and much more intriguing to the reader. The last mistake I see in close third person narration is letting the narrator interject. So close third person can be a really tricky perspective to write in, perhaps the most tricky, because you are balancing having a narrator who is writing in third person, yet you also have this point of view character who really feels like the center of the story and everything we see is through them. So you really need to balance the role of the narrator with the role of the POV character. To do this, you wanna make sure that the narrator doesn't inadvertently drop any subjective commentary on the scene. This often comes in the form of an adjective or an adverb that is in the third person narration that might not necessarily match up with what the POV character is feeling or how they are responding or experiencing that moment. You really want to ensure that you are containing all of the emotionally charged words in the scene to what the POV character is going to be experiencing themselves. You don't want the narrator to come in and add this layer of commentary and subjectivity onto the scene because that really just adds a layer of confusion and starts to muddle the entire narrative. Let me show you what this means because I think it will be clearer when you see an example. Just then, the man turned toward Megan and Casey. Shockingly, he shut the car door and ran off into the field beyond the parking lot. Can you identify where there is some commentary from the narrator in this excerpt? It's just one word. It's that shockingly. Who is saying that this is shocking? It seems to be coming out of thin air from the narrator. This sentiment can still be portrayed through Megan's POV. So let me show you what would be a better version of this same paragraph. Just then, the man turned toward Megan and Casey. He shut the car door and ran off into the field beyond the parking lot. Megan was equal parts shocked and relieved. So here we are really, again, seeing the scene, how Megan is experiencing and feeling it herself. She's not only shocked in this case, as the narrator apparently was, she's also relieved. So this again ties us back to Megan, ties us back to her experience, which as our POV character is the way that you should be telling the story. If you are writing a story in close third person narration, I hope these tips help you catch some small mistakes and fix them to make an even stronger narrative. Let me know in the comments what POV you're writing in, what you prefer, and why you chose that specific POV. And if you're looking for more writing tips, I recommend checking out my video on dialogue mistakes. It's very similar to this video where I walk through the most common dialogue mistakes I see in stories and give you examples on how to fix them. As always, if you found this video helpful, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of this community and can't wait to bring you more of my writing advice. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.